Ron uh, has come all the way from Ontario today to talk about low trellis hops and his project that he's been doing. Um, and I thought it would be interesting because I know a lot of people have interest in growing hops this way. Um, and so Ron's going to tell you about his experiences in his first year. Thanks, Ron. Uh, this was my first year growing hops. Uh, my background, computer programmer, television cameraman. <laughs> moved out to the country, I couldn't get a job in either. So I had to create my own job. And that's when I started looking into this. Um, just to show you roughly where... You were on, could you put the microphone a little bit closer? Oh, I'm sorry. Because all full folks are dead. Pardon me? Because all older folks are dead. We're roughly right here. Here's the border. This is me. Uh, Roger, you're somewhere around here, aren't you? Right there. Right there? Okay, right so right right you're close enough. <laughs> okay, now the reason why my wife and I decided to go with Lord Carlos, we didn't know what we were doing anyways. <laughs> <laughs> we had no clue. Like we were doing, like everyone else is doing, you're doing the internet research. After a while, you start stumbling on the same information just on different sites. Thing was, it's ten dollars an hour, ten seventy-five an hour for labor in Ontario. That adds up. Right. So I'm free. I actually built a quarter acre low trellis hopier by myself. And when I say by myself, my wife decided to go to Alberta for a week. <laughs> <laughs> so because I was a television cameraman, um, the camera was on a tripod with a timer and everything else. So what I was, I had. Uh, 12 foot bolts, put them in the ground three feet. On the bucket, basically just slipped it in. But staying with the low trellis idea is the fact of safety. Like, because I'm a one person operation, I take a flip, I'm in the field for a couple hours, and my wife's not going to come and get me until supper time. <laughs> so, and let's, let's face facts. In Ontario, you have to have a safety harness that be tied off above six feet. So that's a regular house line. Six feet you have to be tied up. Yes. Right? So insurance wise, by fall, six feet, I get hurt, they're not paying for it because I didn't have a harness. So when you're talking twenty feet, I fall, I dangle for a while. Until it's not time to be Another thing is that because we don't have customers, uh, crop brewery in Ontario is in its infancy. There are roughly thirty craft breweries in Ontario. You can set up the entire eastern seaboard into Ontario. There is a huge market there. And the problem that we're finding is that yes, this may only be a quarter of an acre, but it doesn't matter how much I have. The microbreweries that are doing well, there's no way I can keep up. They're bringing them in from, uh, I think it's uh, Germany. I can't, I can't produce that much. So I could be my own customer very shortly. Uh, and we also decided we're not going to spend a lot of money because we're not going to be making any money. So we're not going to be building, as you saw those pictures, the giant contraption on the tractor. I was going with what I had. My fantastic little Kubota and a ladder. And that's pretty much it. And in between the rows, it's 15 feet. Just perfect for the truck. And I'll get to that a little bit. Uh, and a big thing is we thought because it's lower and because we're on a pipe, it's going to be easier, easier to harvest. I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> and what it's, it is cheaper to construct because uh, the poles, we got the poles uh, 12 feet for 10 bucks each and a $20 for every trip. So that's pretty cheap. Um, and plus, when I get into the uh, materials, uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more. But the maintenance costs year after year, because you're not putting the strings up and down and you're leaving the netting, and that's what I'm using right now, is soccer net going across. Okay, so we've got six rows. They're 60 feet long. 15 feet spacing, as I mentioned. The reason why I want my truck to go down there is because I'm standing in the bed of the truck. Harvesting. And it's a six foot bed, so I do have some movement, and I jump out, jump in, grab four feet, get out, jump in, and again. <laughs> So like I said, 18 poles, 12 feet long, not exposed. The soccer netting was our biggest expense. The reason why we chose soccer netting is 
People think that hockey is a religious in Canada. It's not. It's only one of the religions. The other one is soccer. It is crazy how many people play soccer. This is the cheapest that we find. Not a soccer netting, just a netting. We tried to earn netting, and for the volume that we needed, to ching, to ching, to ching, to ching, to ching. So I called, uh, in high school I used to work at a rope factory. So I called the guy and said, you know, do you have any ideas? Yeah, we sell them and rope to this guy that makes soccer nets. So I gave the guy a call. And I picked up 400, actually about 400 feet. Uh, I picked it up the next day, because it gave me 40 feet for free. The aircraft cable. Uh, that was a, not necessarily a big expense, but just a pain. Well, as you know, working with aircraft cable is a complete pain. Uh, going forward, I will probably be going back to the rope factory and saying, do you have any other ideas other than aircraft cable? Of course, six rows, two auger anchors, ideas, and then just your typical uh, standard hardware, uh, decimal hooks, eye hooks, blah, blah, blah. And then to keep the netting attached to the top and the bottom, oops, sorry. 1,500 UV zip ties, 10 cents a piece. And this is day two, day three, and day four. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so glad that uh, Heather was saying there's things that you know, didn't know in learning. All these little things, I planted the rhizomes before I put the netting on, because I'm smart. <laughs> but they're eight inches apart. So, <coughs> I did, did that great. So here's the cost. Now, I only put the cost of the materials for the low troughs. I didn't put in the irrigation. I didn't put in anything else other than just the material cost. And this is what it cost me in Canada, $2,000. Uh, to put the holes in, we uh, have a, a hole here. Put it on the tractor. Uh, we, we went, that, was, that was equipment that we had. That was part of our decision making. That, OK, we don't have to buy this. We won't have to buy that. And another thing, if the load draw doesn't work and we're going to abandon the idea, we're going to go to the municipalities. Hey, I got 400 feet of soccer and you want to buy it? <laughs> so, and that's, that's it right here. I basically, like the horizons are all planted. Here's my poles, anchors, and I basically just rolled it out, cut it, and then put it over the top and then jumped off and held the thing in, right over the top. Don't do that. And here's the completed, completed yard. Uh, and one thing I learned from Roger, put these little flags at the end so you can find them. You don't want to find them with a lawnmower. So I got six rows. I have five varieties. I'll tell you right now, Pearl did nothing. That's just an empty row for me right now. Uh, the mountain put the best. And the cascade was pretty, pretty average. Now, the yield was low, and there's a whole bunch of reasons why. Or reasons why I don't know, but what I suspect. It was a low troubles. This is actually right before I harvested, so it's pretty low. I got first year rhizomes. So we had the problem. Organic. I didn't put anything down. Put them in the ground, walked away, and I watered them with something I'll talk about in a minute when it comes to wheat control. Poor weather. You know, we could have built the ark, and then two days later, we were in the Sahara, and it stayed that way. And that was part of my problem, because when I built the ark, I had to get my horizon to the ground. I didn't properly treat my, my turf, so I had clumps. I basically picking up a clump, putting a horizon, putting the clump back down. <laughs> and raining it. <laughs> With my thinking that it's going to rain more, it's going to break down more, but no, it flashed flash right, and I had all these clumps everywhere. So, with that, I'm going to say the, the biggest thing, I think, is the poor irrigation. Because it wasn't, it wasn't holding water. With all these crevices and everything else, the water was just running out through it. So when I was doing my weed control, one of the part-time jobs that I do have is that I own a small business, and I use hot water, steam vapor, to kill weeds for municipalities on curbing, driveways, and locking bricks. Heats up the water to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, and I just walk along, and it burns the leaves, starves the roots, blah blah blah, natural selection. I used it on this, thinking that the roots would be protected. Because the dirt was still bumpy, and there's still basically rivers running through it, 
and basically squirts a lot of prizes. Mm -hmm. So that is an option. Just make sure that if you're going to use something like that, something that's kind of out of left field, do a little bit of thinking. I didn't think about the consequences before I did. I didn't examine. I didn't examine my yard. You say, what are the benefits? What are the consequences? And that's a huge problem. It's like, oh, I'll just do this. This will work. And you find it the hard way. So the weed control is basically take the lawnmower, go halfway through, hit the netting, come back, another eight inches, and you you know you do that for for hours and hours. Because I wasn't even gonna be pulling weeds. I'm just no. So a lot of these questions will be answered down the road when we start kind of harvesting more data and being a little bit smarter about it, as opposed to be great for the cost farmers. Now what do we do? Um, big things that we found that didn't work, clipping the top didn't force side growth. Didn't force it at all. Um, you can only pick by hand, as uh, Steve mentioned, uh, because when you have that netting, it just holds on to everything. Right? I even tried one of those berry scoops, and that lasted all about 10 seconds because I kept getting caught in the netting. So out of that went. And then I realized is that, well, my soccer netting is five feet by five feet. There are five inches by five inches that I can't get around to harvest this up. So just like the weeding, you weed one side, and you've got to go back the other side. So when you're harvesting, you go down one side, and you go back the other side. That's not cost effective. In fact, it's really boring. <laughs> uh, and you're, you're forced to pick from the day. Now, if anyone wants to develop an automatic harvester, for the netting, you can test on my nose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the experience, I don't have the know-how, and I don't have the patience to try and present <coughs> something of that magnitude. And like I said, the weeding was very difficult. Another problem that I didn't think was going to be a problem, you can't cut through. You leave your hammer over here. <laughs> <laughs> Back. Oh, I forgot the bag of nails. <laughs> so, are we going to continue with this? Probably not. Um, we're the only ones in our area, and the only ones that I know in close proximity that are doing this. So, we don't really have a lot of support. We don't have a. We don't have help. We're doing this on our own. We're doing it blind. But if everyone's doing the conventional. Uh, system and everyone is getting together with harvesters and you know also that sort of stuff. We want to jump on that because we can't be continue to do this by ourselves. It just it doesn't make sense because if this was an acre, I'd still be doing it. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, yeah, I've already mentioned this. No one's doing it. Uh, those trees are on. Harvesting. It seemed easier because it's shorter, I can just reach out, but it's not, it's, it's way more difficult, you know. Um, until you do it, you, you won't understand, like, this was a really dumb idea. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no, there's no small stuff, scale, scale harvesters to do it, and I would have to invent something. And that is, that's not what I do. That's, it, just not to put a cap on here, discourage it. In the state, there were some farms there developing low scale trellis harvesters. And okay. They had a prototype they were working on, and they already had 400,000 into it. Oh, did they? Okay. Well, even, even if they had 400,000 into it, for them to make a profit, I can't afford that. Well, they've got 3,000 acres. Oh, yeah. Um, we're, we're, not, we're not there yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want to see. The big thing is, is that it's pretty easy, we found out it's pretty easy to spend a lot of cash. It is really easy to spend a lot of money on this. And we are very, very careful that we don't go out of the crazy. And then I have this in an old aid field that will never be seen again. And we spent eight, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. So this, this was just a trial. The big thing was to see what grew in our area and if all those trials would work. The answer to... <coughs> Those questions, it's unknown. It may work over time if I figure out, or other people figure out with more studies, on how to make it grow sideways. Because once it got to the top, like everything else went across. So I had 
all this empty space. When I thought that I would just have a nice wall of homes that I did. Uh, the only thing that's great about this is that the netting stays up. The next year, you're just like, oh, oh, they're growing. Good. I'll, be, I'll be back next year to see how they're doing. There's none of this high experience up. And <coughs> so, uh, like I said, what do we can do with it? Try new things. Use it to propagate rhizomes. Sell the soccer net. <laughs> Recoup some cost. So I'm not, I know it's, I'm not discouraging people from drawing it. I'm just drawing on my experience that building it was super easy. Like I took the pole, the pole into the ground. You know, I had, the, I had all 18 poles up in a day. That's including the levels. And the, the longest thing was putting up the screens at times. You know, every word. Um, This is where I use most of my resources because there's not a whole lot out there. There's more every day, but after a while you just stop looking. Um, a, lot of, a lot of thanks to the media. They were, uh, I don't know how many times in the mail letter. Help, help. You know? I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you're the one doing it. Exactly. Yeah. But it's all the standard stuff. I've got clover in here. Um, I tried some, uh, some uh, straw there. And this is where I actually burnt all my uh, all my cascades with the uh, hot water because I, I didn't use I didn't wait long enough and I didn't prep the ground before I did. So I am going to try it again this year, but I'm going to be a lot smarter. And plus, because I, I planted them every eight inches, I suppose every three, there was a lot of um, uh, casualties of running the fire. You know, if I had a bigger space, I would be able to control this very a lot more. 